Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Lopen23. You're joining me for Chapters, Interactive Stories, Kidnapping with Princess, Chapter 2. Staring at Princess Talia through the bars of her dungeon cell. Sitting on her cot, she glares back, silent and defiant. You could have sworn you heard scraping sounds as if someone had been trying to dig her way to freedom. Bring me that spoon. I'm not done eating. You are now. Bring me this moon. Come in here and get it, if you want it so badly. You know what? Go in and take the spoon from her. A grim look on your face. You gain the coat, slide open the door, or bars, and march right up to the princess. Tess's eyes go wide, but she doesn't budge. Brashly, she even reaches for the spoon. Because of your training and not being a spoiled princess, your reflexes are better. You snatch your hand and take the spoon. I put you in a dungeon as punishment. You don't think for a second that this is a, as bad as it can get? If you were going to hurt me, I think you'd have done it by now. Is that so? You squeeze, crushing her uncalloused hand in yours. Ow! Stop! Ow! Don't test me, princess. That was more fun than it should have been. Your satisfica satisfaction, Talia, only glares at you as you leave, locking the door behind you. You return to your observation room to check on the video feeds. None of the cameras in the palace reveals anything interesting. As you've done every day for the last week, you check the new sites for stories about Prince Talia's kidnapping. Just like every other day, you find nothing. Queen Esmeralda has put a media blackout on her daughter's disappearance. I must find out how the palace is responding to the disappearance. Yes, because going out in the world when you might be the prime suspect and going to the place is the perfect idea, isn't it? Ah, and here I thought you wore through training. Dunning hat and oversized sunglasses, you drive the several miles into town. Oversized sunglasses. <laughs> Uh, you check your old BMW beater, a calculated choice of vehicle, behind a small restaurant. There in the alley, you spot four shady-looking people talking in huddle. The squat, ugly man gives you a long, gauging stare as you head into the restaurant. In the diner, you check the paper, but only information in it is gossip columns. That about a tropical locale the princess has jetted off to. Morning. I may help you. Oh, I was just... Actually, maybe you can help me. I'm a model here for shoot. I'm not sure if so. so uh, that would have been good. And I think Tally and I would have... Make a great Instagram couple. Uh, you? Um, really? I take it you don't agree. Oh, no. I mean, you're gorgeous. I just meant, well, that's a bit... stalkerish. A bit. I don't think there are any way you could get to meet her. I don't even know where you'd begin. You haven't heard anybody talking about what she's up to, or she might be. You're asking a lot of questions for somebody who's not from around here. What's that accent, London? Startled, you turn towards the other patron at the counter. The one looks at you out of the corner of her eye, examining you. More or less. Anyway, never mind. Just making small talk. Something about this woman makes you nervous. You throw back the rest of your coffee and get up and go. You know what I think? I think the palace doesn't know where she is. You stop in her tracks, acting casual. You sit back down. Oh? Why do you say that? Call it a hunch. In fact, I almost wonder if she's been taken. A chill runs down your spine. Your skin feels clammy. Does she know? You curse yourself for leaving your weapon in the car. That's a pretty wild claim. Mm, simply ask her what she knows. What makes you say that? No reason. Or maybe I have reasons. What's the matter to you? It doesn't. I mean, I'm just curious. It's quite a claim to make, you know? 
claim. I only said it was a hunch. Why are you asking so many questions? Who are you? Me? I'm nobody. I've never met any of the royal family members. Just a very odd person, huh? Sure, why not? Suddenly relaxing, the mysterious woman trucks. She smiles. Then again, people say I'm crazy. And they're probably right. And on that note... You bathe the waitress, thank her, and, with a glance back at the mysterious woman, take your leave. At a brisk pace, you head towards your car, where two thugs are standing and looking suspicious. As they begin to move away, you recognize them as part of the group that was in the alley before you went in. Do I... stop them and ask if they're up to something? Well, they're moving away. Ignore, but keep a close eye on them. You'll have a cold stare at them as they head back to the alley and rejoin their crew. In your car, you hesitate a moment before turning the key in the ignition. You decide you're being paranoid. Now that you're a serious criminal, you're jumping at shadows. You start the car without further issue. On the way back, while driving through miles of forest, you get a phone call. It's your dad and mum. You feel a tinge of guilt, but also comfort as you pick up the phone using your adopted name. Iris, how are you, dear? Why haven't you called? Are you all right? Your father and I have been worried sick about you. Sorry, Mom. I've been so busy traveling and researching. Oh, honey, are you about ready to head back to England? I haven't found them yet. I can't go back now. Iris, I understand your need to find your birth parents, but if you don't, that's okay, too. You know we love you every bit as much as if you were born to us. I know, Mom. I love you, too. Same mix of emotions. You ain't lying to them, though you've been doing it since you were ten years old. You certainly never had a need to go looking for your biological parents. Well, maybe if you'd call a little bit more often, your mother wouldn't fret quite so much. I don't have cell reception where... Uh, that is, I'm, I'm often traveling, Mum. Uh huh. Here, your father wants to talk to you. Maybe he'll believe that one. Iris, how's the research going? Any luck so far? Uh, not so far. I see. Well, that's okay. Trying is what really matters. We care about you so much, Pumpkin. We just want to make sure you don't get your hopes up. You told us your parents had abandoned you, so I just want to make sure your expectations... I know. Sorry for yelling. I know, Dad. It's just, this is difficult. I can only imagine what you're feeling, Pumpkin. Just know we're here for you as soon as you're ready to come home. Or I could just send Chandra. No, 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 no. Do not send Sandra, please. That woman hates me. That's ridiculous. Our executive assistant is just protective of you. She's a Rottweiler in a dress. Come on, Pumpkin. No Rottweiler is as strong as she is. Look, I'm... I'm making progress. I'll call her email more often in the meantime, okay? Okay, Pumpkin. Good luck. Be good. I will. Too late! Ah, you hang up. As best you can, you swallow a lie. Hoping. Someday they will understand. I hate to be that person, but not even I understand. And I'm the MC. Just then, you notice that the same black SUV has been behind you for several miles now. I haven't seen another car in forever. Could that SUV be following me? Maybe I should pull over and let it pass. Mind yourself not to be paranoid. No, I'm gonna pull over and let it pass. You pull to the side of the road. The SUV pulls over, too. Your heart begins to race. You open the glove box and take out your pistol. The SUV doors open. It's a long, tense moment before... Brooke! Your jaw drops as Brooke, your best friend since college, bounds down out of the SUV and skips over to your car. You get out. Brooke? What in the bloody hell? You scared me half to death. Only half. <sighs> I must be losing my touch. Brooke latches onto you in a 
big bear hug. Your anger... Your anger ebbs, and you return to the race. Wait a damn second. How did you find me? How? Well... I kinda maybe installed a GPS sniffing script in your phone's OS? Maybe? Do I even want to know? No, you do not. Please don't make me tell you. Oh, now you're definitely telling me. Out with it. Remember that time you went on a date with... Yuriko? Oh, you did not bug my phone just to spy on my date. What? Can you blame me? I wasn't over my crush yet. The crush on me? Yes? The one you're still not over? Oh, please. I'm so over you. Mostly. Okay, stalker. So why are you here? Despite being in the middle of nowhere, you glance around fervently. You know what I've done, and what I'm still planning on doing. Actually, I'm not too clear on the second part. Brug? The less you know, the better. Tell her what she wants to hear, it's none of your business. The less you know, the better. I'm not worried about myself. Your adoptive parents and I are just worried about you. Look, I guess I'll be totally honest here. Your parents asked me to come find you. What? Well, they're worried about you. You told them you haven't seen your biological parents since you were ten. And, well... Which isn't a lie. Nor even close to the truth. Hello? Confident here? You've been telling me your life story since freshman year. And somehow you still don't understand why I have to do this. I never did, and I doubt I ever will, especially if you get your captured or killed. Do you understand what it would do to me, and to your parents, if you die doing this, or at all for that moment, or matter? Brock. No, don't ply me with some bullshit about how it can't happen to you, and how justice wins out, and blah 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 blah. I'm being careful very careful. Oh? Well, okay then. I'm sure it'll all work out happily ever after. Oh, your sarcasm is up there at levels that even I go to. Okay. I can see I'm getting nowhere. I'll be in town until you wise up. Call me when that happens. Go back to England, Brooke. Please, for your sake. Or what, Iris? You'll kidnap me? Exasperated, Brooke gets back in her SUV. She blows you a kiss, then drives away, back toward the town. I have to remember, I'm doing the right thing. I have to hurt Talia. It's the only way. Last you saw them, Talia and her mother were close, thick as thieves or killers, as the case may be. Regardless, Queen Esmeralda will give up anything for her precious hair, or she'll give up her life. You head back to the hideout, deep in thought. As usual, it takes several minutes just to turn off the alarm system and put the security system on standby. And you see Talia curled in a ball on her bed, asleep. You feel a tinge of doubt. But it's dispelled almost immediately. You know a faker when you see one. With a glance at the ceiling corners, you key in the code to unlock the dungeon cage. Then go to her. Get up. Talia stirs, but does not wake up. You're not asleep. I can tell by your breathing. Get up. Delia suddenly sits up and moves away from you. Her concern and anxiety are real enough. Did you pull the wires out of the cameras right after I left? Or were you working on it when you heard me come home? Go to hell! You chuckle. Hmm. Whatever. It won't matter soon enough. I've decided I'm going to ransom you to your beloved mother. Ollie, the concern on Talia's face grows, hearing this. How? How much are you going to ask for? Are you sure that's the right question? What is your life, Princess? What is your life worth, Princess? A lot, especially to me. And what is it worth to your queenly mother, I wonder? Does she value you for financial reasons? No. In short, money is not what your life is worth to me. Then what will it be? What is to be my ransom? Your hands rest on your hips. You smile at her, an old familiar smile. 
the throne. That's right, princess. She gets her daughter back, and I get the throne. Talia looks at you with fear, bordering on panic. Something about her response worries you. She'll never do it. Not in a million years. Won't she? You and your mother were always so close. You think she wouldn't trade her position for getting her daughter back alive and well? What Talia says next is barely a whisper. She's on the verge of tears. Not a chance! What? Why not? Are you kidding? She despises me! We haven't gotten along since I was a little girl! On good days, she tolerates and avoids me. Otherwise, she's nothing but critical of me. She belittles me in front of the other nobles. Nothing I ever do is good enough for her. And she can't stand it when I voice my own opinion, or do anything or say anything that in any way goes against her. Do you know what she did on my 18th birthday a few months ago? You say nothing, as the worry in your gut continues to grow. Nothing! Not a thing! I even organized my own birthday party for all the people of the palace, and she didn't even bother to show up. Do you know the one thing about me she likes and admires? The only thing? What? The fact that I'm her hair, I'm her legacy, and that's only part of my life that matters to her. So you see, my kidnapper, if you plan was to trade me for the throne, then I am already dead. You shake your head in stunned disbelief. The only thing you hadn't planned for. Her. You and your mother aren't close, but you used to be inseparable. Talia narrows her eyes at you, as if trying to read your thoughts. You don't know me, and clearly you don't know her. I don't know what you're basing this on, but it's wrong. You're wrong. She might trade some money or jewels or heirlooms or something for me, but the throne? Ha! <laughs> Never in a million years. Your stare down at the vulnerable princess huddled on, bed, on the bed. She is being honest, or thinks she is. What she's saying just might lead to her doom, so it's probably actually true. You stare at her in confusion and frustration, and for one moment, you pity her. And in that moment, you want to protect her. Angry with yourself for such weakness, you banish the thought and grab the princess by the arm. Fine. If you're not valuable as I thought, then by God, I'll find a way to get more out of you. And in the meantime, you're not going to serve as princess. You're going to serve me. What? What? You drag her out of her cell and down the hall. She kicks and screams, but you're pretty strong enough for this. Your expression is grim as you toss her in the lift and walk in after her. You kneel on her to keep her still under the until the elevator stops. Then you drag her by the hair and shove her in the laundry room. She lands heavily, sprawling across the floor. That's right. Starting now, you're not my prisoner. You're my servant. What? You're going to cook and clean and get on your hands and knees and clean the floor. All day, every day, until I decide what you're worth. I... I don't know how to cook or clean, or, or do laundry. I'm a princess. Well, then you're gonna damn well learn. I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Mm. Oh, I don't doubt it. You're the very definition of spoiled little brat. She sees, and then goes suddenly calm. Fine. I expect I think better from your kind. But you have to show me how. I don't have the first clue. Teach the princess how to be normal. Oh, I'd be happy to. Cautiously, Princess Talia gets to her feet. She approaches the washer and dryer. What's that? Sugar? Where do you put sugar in the machine? The laundry detergent? It's soap, not sugar. Bloody hell. They really stunned it, you, didn't they? Here, take a scoop of it from the box, okay? Pay attention. You take a scoop. Suddenly, Tally grabs a detergent from you and flings the entire box in your face. How did you not see that one coming? You scream in shock and pain as the soap gets deep in your eyes. You sprint to the sink. Opening up both faucets, your knuckles go white as you grip the sink and dunk your head underwater to wash away the soap. When you surface and can finally open your eyes with pain, you whip your hair back and search for the princess. She is fleeing straight towards the opposite door of the room. 
do I sprint after her, tackle her, and pin her to the ground? Openly laugh at her foolishness, stand there patiently and watch. Hmm. So things are going a little bit different in my head. Um, especially because I, I feel like there is some, uh, how do you say, romantic possible feelings there? Um, possibly? But, <clears throat> right now I'm in a mood. I'm gonna go with... Stand there patiently and watch. Oh, we got a diamond for them. Princess Telly grabs a door handle and pulls. It's locked, of course. She pulls a hairpin from her delicate crown braid and attempts to pick the keyhole. But there's no keyhole. You watch quietly as Tally discovers the numeric keypad and thumbprint lock. No matter how hard you try, you cannot escape, Princess. This is a fortress. This. You gesture all around. This is your ivory tower. I built it for you, sparing no expense, planning it for years. I have a degree in computer science, a black belt, and two schools of martial arts, and I've been trained in virtually every weapon known to man. I have bent my life around a singular purpose, capturing you and using you. Serve me well, and hope that I do not use your death to satisfy my vengeance. Without another word, you fix your wet hair and head for the door. That was awesome, by the way. Um... Like I said, I was in a different mood. The whole chasing after her, grabbing her, and pinning her. Um, <laughs> that being said. So, by the way, if you do rate the app, from what I've been told, you do get a bunch of diamonds, like 20 or so. So that's kind of cool. Um, you gain a lot more diamonds than, say, choices give you. So keep that in mind, too. And... Um, I'd say there's about a many, as many diamond choices as choices offers, but um, they're a lot cheaper, like seven diamonds for one choice. I was like, wow, holy crap, you would never see that. Um, with that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy. Please feel free to like, comment, share, or subscribe. Remember, YouTube is still giving their shenanigans. Um, so, uh, if you did enjoy the video, please do share the video. Uh, maybe others might enjoy it as much as you did. Otherwise, um, head down in the description below. If you're feeling generous enough, you can support my channel and content. Otherwise, uh, there are some social media links if you want to follow. And until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace!